Local news about local people. This is NewsLink Indiana. Hello and welcome to NewsLinkIndiana.com for Wednesday, March 1st, 2006. I'm Abby Walton. Today is Ash Wednesday, a day that marks the start of Lent, the 40 days and 40 nights that lead up to Easter. Many religions observe Lent. Some, such as Catholics, show their dedication to the holiday by fasting and by giving up meat on Fridays to mark the day they believe Christ died on the cross. The ashes are created from burning the palm leaves from Palm Sunday of the year before. The ashes are placed on the forehead in the shape of a cross with this message. Is remember that you are dust and to dust you will return. That obviously talks about the fact that this life is going to end, but also that there is an eternal life. So it's like, what are we living for? Just this world or the next world? And this year, Easter falls on Sunday, April 16th. If you're a dog owner and haven't paid your taxes on your pet, a potential house bill may let you off the hook. NewsLink Indiana's Laura Warfield has the story. It may be one of the most ignored laws in Indiana history, but if you own a dog, you owe the state. You're supposed to go to the township and buy your dog tags. But for some owners who haven't paid up, ignorance is bliss. I would say that there's probably people that don't even know the dog tag is, exists because um, we're not, you're not notified. The law, more than a century old, puts money into a fund to reimburse farmers if wild dogs attack livestock. The leftover goes to Purdue Veterinary Research. But legislators are pushing to have it abolished, citing the law hasn't been enforced and too many Hoosiers are left in the dark. Currently, dog owners have to pay a $2 tax fee on dogs like Regis, but some suggest that a license fee may be more effective. A better suited, I suppose, would be a licensing fee in each county. Let the counties then track their animals. But before new animal control laws are created, this one may have to go to the dogs. In Newcastle, Laura Warfield, NewsLink, Indiana. Supporters say they hope the bill will pass before the end of the legislative session. And a young musician is gaining attention for a very advanced talent. And as NewsLink Indiana's Melissa Delahanty tells you, today kids from around the community got a chance to hear his music. With spotlights, space sounds, and Captain Kirk, the young people's concert filled Emmons with excitement. It was awesome. It was awesome. This year's theme, Outer Space, with the star of the show, only 15 years old. Why did you pick up the double bass? So that my dad couldn't make me take it in the car so that I couldn't practice on vacation. <laughs> with the help of someone playing an instrument their own age, students here at Emmons can now understand how the symphony works. Kirk Trevor playing as Captain Kirk says the concert teaches children how to use instruments. This is a, a, a great opportunity that we have in hearing a live orchestra and performing and singing. And the enthusiastic audience jumped at the chance to get involved. And it's important that the uh, symphony reaches out to the community and helps students and children see uh, upfront, personally, live um, music and, and how that music impacts their world. Teachers will continue teaching the music played today in class. In Muncie, Melissa Delahanty, NewsLink, Indiana. The Muncie Symphony Orchestra offers a new age night out, the fifth annual Fisher Schaefer Pops concert this Saturday at 7.30 p.m. at Emmons. And you can be charged more for your phone. State lawmakers approve legislation allowing companies to raise rates for basic local service. The bill eases media regulations, making it easier for companies to provide television services and anywhere in the state and eventually on the same line as your phone. But half of the community must have access to high-speed internet in order to charge more customers more. The bill now moves to Governor Mitch Daniels, who stated he will sign the bill. And should the avian or bird flu hit the United States or hit the United States, the ethics of distributing vaccines could come into play. While medical professionals tend to hold a high code of ethics, some experts say that in the case of a pandemic, ethics could get thrown out the window.
it wouldn't surprise me at all if there are individuals out there that have access to vaccine, for instance, individual physicians or people that, that for instance, might make a choice to vaccinate their own family if they were able to come into um, possession of the vaccine. Paul says he believes the bird flu will arrive in the U.S. sometime next fall. And now here's Jennifer Cook with a look at our forecast. And Jennifer, it was actually quite mild today. It was. You know what? The average high for the first day of March is 45 degrees. Today we saw 3 degrees warmer, 48 degrees this afternoon. We saw some clouds in the sky, but we also saw some peaks of sunshine. The reason why we didn't see the warm-up that we were expecting was because the warm front stalled towards the south early this morning. It's currently slowly beginning to move towards the north, but most of the spring warmth will stay towards the south. Showers and thunderstorms are likely this evening with windy conditions following them for the day tomorrow and temperatures are going to fall in fact through the day tomorrow. Overnight lows in the mid to upper 30s this evening, 36 locally, 40 in Indianapolis, 38 in Lafayette and 42 down in Bloomington. We're going to watch this low pressure system slowly begin to move towards the east and as it does this evening, that's when we're expecting the showers and thunderstorms scattered nature begin to develop. Then through the day tomorrow, expect some cloud cover. We could see some morning rain showers stick around. Then we're going to see the skies begin to clear. By tomorrow afternoon, we're going to be a couple degrees below the average for the second day of March. 42 locally, 45 Indianapolis, 46 Bloomington, upper 40s to lower 50s out towards the west. Before tonight, expect mostly cloudy skies, once again scattered rain showers and a chance for thunderstorms. Overnight low 36 degrees for the day tomorrow. Expect morning showers and then we're going to see some clearing. Very windy though. The winds from the north northwest 5 to 20 miles per hour with gusts maxing out around 30 miles per hour. Your afternoon high for the second day of March 42 degrees. The five day forecast shows scattered clouds through the day on Friday, Friday 39 for your day on Saturday, 40 degrees, but then we're going to see a rain snow mix move in Sunday. Sunday's high 40, Monday 38 with variable clouds, and Monday morning 25 degrees. So we're actually going to remain a couple degrees below the average for the start of March throughout the next couple of days. Well, it seems like at least, you know, we may have a cold day on Friday, but the weekend doesn't look too bad. It doesn't look as bad as it has been. Yes, exactly. Thanks, Jennifer. And she's only 13 years old and already has Olympic dreams. NewsLink Indiana's Beth Campus followed this young athlete as she trains for the gold. Mary Beth Donahue has been diving since she was nine. You could say it's a family affair. I just went and watched my brother and they wanted me to try it since I was always there. And I tried it and they said I was pretty good for how young I was. So I've been going ever since and she already has a shot at competing in the 2008 Summer Olympics. She's a good enough talent that I would imagine she'd be um, poised for a uh, very high level of diving. And with the difficulty of her dives, she expects to place high in major events. I would like to get like top five Olympic trials and hopefully go to the Olympics. It's here at the Indianapolis Natatorium where Donahue spends the majority of her time. But it's not the Olympic dream or the competition that keep her coming back. It's all the people she's met along the way. She took that medal off after they announced, you know, Team USA, Mary Beth Dunahe, and they played the national anthem. And, you know, I thought she'd be really proud, and she was. But she took off with, you know, Team Mexico and the Great Britain team and traded pins, and she just had a great time and met a lot of friends. Dunahe continues to attend Elwood Middle School with her friends, all while trying to do what few athletes get to. I hope that she that her dreams come true. I mean, if she wants to go to the Olympics, then I hope that happens for her. In Indianapolis, Beth Campus, NewsLink, Indiana. And this weekend, Dunahay will compete in Fort Lauderdale, and she hopes to place in the top three. And those are the headlines for East Central Indiana for Wednesday, March 1st, 2006. Please join us again tomorrow right here at NewsLinkIndiana.com.